All You Need to Have All Your Needs Met by David O. Oyedepo. God is all you need to have all your needs met. Faith is all it takes to get God to work. Spiritual understanding is all you need to activate faith. Introduction. This book in your hand contains the secrets that will terminate all your struggles in seeking after blessings. It will turn you into a blessing to your generation and world. In it, I will be exposing you to God and when you come to on key that is when you agree with the almighty you will lay up gold as dust all your needs will disappear as though they never existed but let me say this loud and clear god is all you need god is all you need to have all your needs met god is not in need his mission is to meet your needs after 35 years of quality work with god i can boldly say and you better believe me that god is all you need to have all your needs met by my connection to god all that i ever need is supernaturally handed down to me you are sent to be a blessing to the world not to yourself and family alone you are not a blessing until you start flowing out to others and meeting the needs of the world so enough of all this god bless me god bless me prayers the blessing god has in store for you is beyond that you are to be blessed to the point of you influencing your world i'm talking about you becoming a blessing to the families of the earth you are sent after the order of father abraham and king david to serve your generation however until you connect with god you can't attain to this height seeking god in truth is what makes the journey of life swift and sweet when you make god first you have committed him to making you first no wonder jesus said seek ye first god's kingdom and his righteousness and every other thing shall be added unto you matthew 6 33 pursuing god's heart and interest is the secret card for having all your needs met and winning god's heart is the number one task of every believer when you succeed in winning his heart like king david you can no longer lose ground in your journey in life the more you open up to god the greater your destiny becomes until you connect with god the journey of life is never great it is your connection with the great god that makes the journey of life great i say this again god is all you need to have all your needs met and faith is all it takes to get through to god and understanding of the word of god is all that faith requires to come alive in you so come along as i espouse you to this all-sufficient god chapter one understanding is it wisdom is the principal thing therefore get wisdom and with all thy getting get understanding proverbs 4 verse 7 god is all you need to have all your needs met and faith is all it takes to get god to work understanding is all that faith requires to come alive but what is understanding it is being able to see what god is saying and understanding of the word of god is our most valuable assets in our journey as christians understanding is the only thing that distinguishes one believer from another there is no substitute for understanding fasting is a waste of time and a religious punishment without understanding prayer is a religious oppression as well without understanding this is because everything in the kingdom produces to the level of your understanding in the account of the parable of the sower recorded in matthew 13 verse 18 to 20 
23 jesus said the seeds that fell on good grounds are those with a good and honest heart who received the word and understood them and so went on to produce fruits some a hundredfold others 60 and others 30 the only variable among the factors listed is their understanding the seeds that produced all fell on good grounds but their understanding varied so it is the depth of our understanding of the truth of scriptures that determines the level of our triumph in life i therefore lose upon you the spirit of wisdom and understanding in jesus name the bible is full of treasures it is the will of the father god for his children however it can only be delivered to them according to their understanding our understanding of the will the bible is what determines our access to the blessings or provisions contained therein he made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. Psalm 103 verse 7. When we understand his ways, we will be in command of his acts. Moses was in command of his acts because he understood God's ways. That was why Moses could get water out of the rock and get the sea to give way. They only saw the miracles. They didn't know how to produce them. However, Moses knew how because God made his ways known unto him. I pray that you too will cause waves everywhere you go by an understanding of God's ways in Jesus name. Remember, God is all you need to have all your needs met the man that wandered out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead proverbs 21 verse 16 the bible says here that a lack of understanding of god's words and ways is what makes a believer look like a sinner as a result he will abide in the congregation of the dead suffering what unsaved people are suffering in order not to suffer like this please pray this prayer with me lord open me up to your ways I want to be enlisted among the army that will be causing waves across the length and breadth of the earth. Open me up to your ways by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Because by applying myself to your ways, I will naturally continue to cause waves on the earth and to command your acts at will. God made his ways known unto me. And people only see the signs coming alive. I knew the ministry God gave me would be a prosperous one because God showed me the way to inexplicable prosperity. God showed me how to birth it. I knew our church was going to erupt in growth. How? He made his ways known unto me and others see the results. I knew I cannot be sick and many got very bothered for my sake when I was declaring it. Now, years upon years have passed and I am still very strong and getting stronger. For the 23 years that I have been in the work of the ministry full time, I have never been out of service or meeting on health grounds. I have never laid my back on any hospital bed. Before I got married, the Lord made his ways for a harmonious and hitch free family life known unto me. When I saw it, I declared with all authority we are heading for a hitch free marriage and it has been so ever since it is the ways of god that commands the acts of god engage your spirit man but how do we get understanding the reason many are frustrated in church is because they have not come to understand the system or ways of grasping the truth apostle john said i was in the spirit on the lord's day and heard revelations 1 verse 10 that means when we are not in the spirit we cannot appreciate any truth
truth of scriptures. We have to be in the spirit to appreciate the truth being communicated to us. After this, I looked and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will shew thee things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. Revelations 4 verse 1 to 2. We can't find God with our heads. We can only find God with our hearts. The word of God in 1 Corinthians 2 verse 11 to 13 says, For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. We things also we speak not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth but which the Holy Ghost teacheth comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Note that in verse 12 it says but we have not received the spirit of this world but the spirit which is of God. Note also that the word spirit is written in small letter s. That means it is by our spirit, the spirit of man, that we are able to know the things that are freely given to us of God. The above scripture clearly helps us appreciate the fact that we can only grasp spiritual things by engaging our spirit man. This is because no man knows the things of a man except the spirit of man that is in him. It is with our spirit that we can grasp the things that are freely given to us of God because the Holy Spirit can only communicate with our spirit not with our soul for the spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God Romans 8 verse 16 so the spirit of God is always relating interacting and communicating with our spirit this illustration in Proverbs 20 verse 27 will help us understand this better. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the belly. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. Now, in Luke 4, 15 verse 8 to 9 Jesus said what woman having 10 pieces of silver if she lose one piece does not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently till she find it and when she has found it she calleth her friends and her neighbors together saying rejoice with me for I have found the piece which I had lost so find her missing piece of silver she first had to light a candle and then she started searching through the pages of scriptures to find what was missing. We can't find anything missing in a dark room without light and our spirit man is the candle of the Lord. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord with which we search to find whatever things are missing without engaging our spirit our search will be endless with my soul have i desired thee in the night yea with my spirit within me will I seek thee early? Isaiah 26 verse 9. The Bible says, And ye shall seek me and find me, when ye shall search for me with all your heart. Jeremiah 29 verse 13. The spirit and the heart mean the same thing in the New Testament. We can't hear from heaven if we are not in the spirit, and faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. If we cannot hear, we cannot believe. And since we cannot believe, we cannot see, understand, and appreciate those things that are freely given to us in scriptures. So it's time to engage.
engage our spirit man in our search. It's not enough to be studious. It's much more important to ensure we are in the spirit when searching for the truth. When the spirit man is able to grasp the truth of scriptures, then all our needs will be met. The depth of our spiritual understanding is what determines the dimension of manifestations we can command. Understanding equals faith. The righteousness of thy testimonies is everlasting. Give me understanding and I shall live. Psalm 119 verse 144. The Bible says, the just shall live by faith. Habakkuk 2 verse 4, Romans 1 verse 17, Galatians 3 verse 11, Hebrews 10 verse 38. This means understanding is equated with faith. For by understanding you live and by faith you live also. That means faith is equal to understanding and understanding is equal to faith and you know Know that it is to you according to your faith. Matthew 9 verse 29. That is, it is to you according to your understanding. The level of manifestations in our lives occur only by our faith. And if our faith is equated with understanding, that means the things we see in our lives are direct products of our understanding of the truth of scriptures. The Bible says we have not received the spirit of this world, but the spirit which is of God by which we are able to know the things that are freely given to us. Most of the things we are struggling for are freely available, but it takes us being able to grasp what the Holy Spirit is teaching from the Word of God to appropriate them. They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. But ye shall die like men, and fall like one of the princes. Psalm 82 verse 5 to 7. They know not, neither will they understand. Thus they shall die like men and fall like one of the princes simply because they lack understanding. Understanding is God's covenant key for meeting all our needs. As simple as coming to church is, many don't understand what the coming together of the brethren means. Many Anything, it's just an opportunity for seeing friends and old faces. No, going to church is going to God's service station. That is why we say, I am going to service when we are going to church. Our bodies are like vehicles brought to a garage so that the old and still engine oil can be changed. The old oil filter can be removed and we can be turned to brand new persons. The angels check us out, put us through God's computer, fix the nerves and parts that are not functioning well and send us back home as brand new persons. Remember the word of God says in Obadiah 1 verse 17 that upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance and there shall be holiness and the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. In Acts 8 verse 30, Philip asked the Ethiopian eunuch, Understand thereest thou what thou readest? And he replied, How can I, except some man should guide me? After Philip explained the scripture to him, and understanding dawned on him, faith rose up in him, causing him to say to Philip, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? We can't understand and still doubt. Understanding implies to be able to see what is being said. Nobody still doubts what he can see. When we see it, we naturally believe it. There is a very clear link between understanding and faith. The Ethiopian eunuch didn't wait for Philip before he said, 
here is water i want to be saved when philip said except thou believe he said i believe i believe and he stepped out of hell into heaven i see god taking you out of every pressure into his divine place in jesus name we can't grasp the truth of scriptures without our faith coming alive the depth of a man's understanding is what determines the strength of his faith the brighter we see the stronger our faith faith is the life wire of the believer but spiritual understanding is the life wire of faith we don't have a future in the kingdom without faith and we can't have faith without understanding understanding is all that faith requires to come alive no wonder paul prayed that god might give to us the spirit of wisdom and understanding in the knowledge of him that the eyes of our understanding being enlightened we may know what is the riches of his inheritance towards us and the greatness of his power towards us who believe according to his mighty power which raised him from the dead ephesians 1 verse 18 to 20 paraphrased then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures luke 24 verse 45 jesus opened their understanding that they might understand the scriptures and he is the same yesterday today and forever i want you to pray this prayer now jesus the same way you open their understanding that they might understand the scriptures open my understanding today i also want to be in command of your acts and situations and circumstances around me chapter 2 be correctly positioned it is said that the moon has no light of its own what we call moonlight is not generated by the moon all the moon does is to align itself to a particular angle to the sun and it will reflect the light generated by the sun with proper alignment the moon gives us the much celebrated moonlight at no personal expense it is the sun generating the heat and light light the moon merely reflects the light likewise every great achievement in the kingdom of god is a function of proper alignment having all our needs met is not a function of struggles but of a proper alignment to the son of righteousness jesus when we are correctly positioned to him we will cheaply reflect his glory without struggles we will generate all the heat while we merely enjoy having all our needs met having all our needs met is not a game it's a result of a quality work with god therefore we must know the correct position to assume for god to meet all our needs let me show you the fear of god praise ye the lord blessed is the man that feareth the lord that delighted greatly in his commandments his seed shall be mighty upon us the generation of the upright shall be blessed wealth and riches shall be in his house and his righteousness endureth forever psalm 112 verse 1 to 3 the number one requirement for having all our needs met is the fear of the lord blessed is the man that feareth the lord the man that fears the lord will also delight greatly in his commandments then shall wealth and riches be in his house that is then shall all his needs be abundantly met not only that his seed shall be mighty upon us and the generation of the upright shall be blessed having all our needs met begins with the fear of the lord we can't connect with divine blessings by playing the nigerian game we will only be entitled to the nigerian kind of blessings whatever that is worth but blessed is the man that feareth the lord that delighteth greatly in his commandments 
his seed shall be mighty upon us. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in his house. This man begins his journey into having all his needs met with the fear of the Lord. He is not a trickster. God is his focus for living. No wonder the Bible says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Psalm 111 verse 10. The Bible says in Psalm 33 verse 18 to 19. Behold the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him, upon them that hope in his mercy to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. The fear of of the Lord also guarantees our access to supernatural supplies. When we fear the Lord, he will keep you alive in famine. This is repeated in Psalm 37 verse 18 to 19. The Lord knoweth the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time, and in the days of famine they shall be satisfied. Seek him. Many people know what they are looking for, but don't know how to get it. As a result, it has become an unending search for them. For the psalmist said, The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Psalm 34 verse 10. The young lion refers to the children of the mighty men of Timber and Caliber. They lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. That means good success is rooted in one thing, seeking the Lord. There is the story of a young man recorded in 2 Chronicles 26. Who began to reign in Israel at age 16 and recorded outstanding success. His kingdom blossomed. He stood out, standing above all. But his secret is found in his story. 16 years old was Uzziah when he began to reign. And he reigned 50 and 2 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name also was Jecoliah of Jerusalem. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his father Amaziah did. And he sought God in the days of Zechariah, who had understanding in the visions of God. And as long as he sought the Lord, God made him to prosper. Second Chronicles 26 verse 3 to 5 as long as he sought the Lord, God made him to prosper. By seeking the Lord, he contacted and connected with the help of God. God helped him. And by that help, the Bible says in verse 8, And the Ammonites gave gifts to Uzziah, and his name spread abroad, even to the entering in of Egypt. For he strengthened himself exceedingly. So, seeking the Lord, strengthens and establishes great destinies. Moreover, Uzziah built towers in Jerusalem at the corner gate and at the valley gate and at the turning of the wall and fortified them. Also, he built towers in the desert and digged many wells for he had much cattle both in the low country and in the plains. Husbands, men also and vine dressers in the mountains and in Carmel, for he loved husbandry. Moreover, Uzziah had an host of fighting men, and Uzziah prepared for them throughout all the host shields and spears and helmets and habergeons and bows and slings to cast stones. And he made in Jerusalem engines invented by cunning men to be on the towers and upon the bulwarks to shoot arrows and great stones with her, and his name spread 
far abroad but he was marvelously helped till he was strong second chronicles 26 verse 9 to 15 he sought god and he built towers in jerusalem he built towers in the desert he dug many wells he made engines people don't know the worth of seeking god that's why they are stranded the young lions may suffer want and hunger but they that seek the lord in truth shall not lack any good thing including good success which includes having all their needs supernaturally met uzziah exemplifies the value and virtue of seeking after god in truth and indeed i have said over and again you may read all the books i have written and listen to all my tapes but until you discover my heartbeat for god you don't know my secret without a heart for god you don't have a mark on the earth therefore in the school of success seeking god in truth is a principal factor genuinely seeking god is a gateway to good success they that seek the lord shall not want any good thing jesus speaking in matthew 6 said therefore take no thought saying what shall we eat or what shall we drink or wherewithal shall we be clothed for after all these things do the gentiles seek for your heavenly father knoweth that ye have need of all these things but seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you the kind of success we are talking about is divine enablement it is having the finger of god in a man's life so what we should do is to qualify for the finger of god in our lives and we would never need to struggle for things to work things will be working at god's instance the ministry god has given me the privilege of running is one of the amazements of the century i'm not under the slightest pressure under heaven i'm lighter than paper in my body there are no chains on my feet i'm as free as air and i sleep like a baby i have heard from god that the battle is not to the strong neither the race to the swift nor yet favor to men of skill ecclesiastes 9 verse 11 until you connect with god the journey of life is never great it is your connection with the great god that makes the journey great romans 9 verse 16 says so then it is not of him that will it nor of him that run it but of god that sheweth mercy i saw also in first samuel 2 verse 9 for by strength shall no man prevail psalm 127 verse 1 to 2 says except the lord builds the house the labor in vain that build it except the lord keep the city the watchman watched but in vain it is vain for you to rise up early to sit up late to eat the bread of sorrows for so he giveth his beloved sleep many are laboring in vain because they have not connected with the builder for every house is builded by some man but he that built all things is god hebrews 3 verse 4 he that builds all things is god only what god builds ever gets built our effort to build great businesses will be laboring in futility except god's hand is there it is written in my bible that without me ye can do nothing john 15 verse 15 we need to genuinely seek after god to fulfill our destinies in grand style for god to secure our great destinies on earth we need a great heart for him great destinies do not come out of struggles they are products of proper alignment standing at a proper angle to jesus the son of righteousness seeking god makes all the difference 
The reason we are living sickly lives is because we are not properly aligned. If a boy of 16 could align himself to secure an enviable success, the choice is in your hands. At the age of 16, Uzziah located this truth, put himself on the line, and for 52 years, he was the brightest of all kings that Israel ever had. Any good thing includes having all our needs met. Seeking God in truth makes the journey of life swift and sweet. We enjoy unusual progress and the result is ever sweet. This demand for proper alignment must not be pursued with our mouth only. It is what must be done with our lives. When we seek him with the whole of our hearts, we will find him. Acquaint thyself with him. Another covenant position we need to assume to have all our needs met by God is found in Job 22 verse 21 to 25. Acquaint now thyself with him and be at peace thereby good shall come unto thee receive i pray thee the law from his mouth and lay up his words in thine heart if thou return to the almighty thou shalt be built up thou shalt put away iniquity far from thy tabernacles then shalt thou lay up gold as dust and gold of offer as the stones of the brooks yea the almighty shall be thy defense and thou shalt have plenty of silver the next thing to do is to get acquainted with god we need to be intimate with him through a genuine covenant walk it is only after then that we can receive the law from him many are running with the law without first being in touch with the law giver so they are not in touch with what he carries if thou return to the almighty thou shalt be built up it is therefore left to us if we return with a crave for him we will have all our needs met carnality is a major disqualifier for having all our needs met he also said thou shalt put away iniquity far from thy tabernacles then shalt thou lay up gold as dust and the gold of Ophir as the stones of the brooks. So where we are standing is what determines what becomes of us. It is important to remember that every time God blesses, he secures the blessings himself. If you return to the Almighty, then the Almighty shall be thy defense and thou shalt have plenty of silver. The Almighty being our defense means no devil can break through to you. That is why the Bible also says the blessings of the Lord makes rich and he adds no sorrow. Proverbs 10 verse 22. When he blesses you because you are acquainted with him, they may hate you, but they can't do you any harm. The law shall be thy defense. That means it's not a security man that is defending the gates, but God. It is God at our door and the bedside as well. He is our defense. So walking with him enhances our security on the earth. That means no accidents on our paths, no mishaps for our children, and no evil tidings from home. That's what he said. And all we need to enjoy this is to correctly position ourselves to him by getting acquainted. Acquaint now thyself with him, thereby good shall come unto thee. From this day onward, only good things shall be associated with us in Jesus' name. He said, you shall be at peace. I decree peace be still to every storm in any area of your life. In Jesus' mighty name.
spiritual prosperity. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. 3 John 2 Our spiritual well-being is what determines our material well-being. Our spiritual stability has a lot to do with our destinies in God's agenda. To walk in the realm where all our needs are met, we can't be partakers with them that collect kick back and kick front. We can't be changing books and figures in our offices and sharing what is not ours and still expect God to meet our needs. God is no respecter of persons. He has no uncles. We are all his children. So if we want to see our heavens fully open, it's important to return to a quality walk with God. The truth is God will not bless any man above his spiritual capacity because he will go off course. With only 10,000 naira in his hand, many angels are assigned to him to make him read his Bible. And with 100,000 naira, God himself is following him up to make sure he still believes there is heaven. So God says to himself, if I give this man any business that produces a million naira profit, I will kill him. So let me leave him where he is now. I have tried him with 10. He's stable. On 15, he's a little shaky. So let's stop between 12 and 15 so I can secure his destiny. God knows the end from the beginning. So anytime God wants to bless us, he wins our lives forward to see how we will behave under the blessing. He says to himself, with a business of two million naira, how does he behave? Ha! He is walking on his head. He has divorced his wife. God then says, bring him down. Bring him down. What of one million? Okay, he goes to church once a month. But once a month is not safe. Let's try him with 500,000. He tried on that and they discovered that he goes to church only twice a month. The Almighty then says to himself, Is it not better to leave him where he was? That way he will come to church four times a month. And if we drop it further to 30,000, he will come for Wednesday services. <laughs> Having all our needs met is not only a response to our giving, but to our living as well. Our lifestyle is what determines our placement with God. If we know something will hurt our kids, would we let them have it? Would you allow your 11-year-old son drive your car simply because you have three and he asks you to allow him drive one of them? Even if your 11-year-old son says to you, Daddy, Mommy, I pray that I will drive myself to school this year. You will reply him, your prayer is not answered because you know it means driving in his coffin to the grave. You know that his legs cannot even touch the pedal. Even though your boy might have confessed between December 31st and January 1st that he's driving himself to school this year because you love him and will not want him dead, you reject his request. That is the same way God ensures that what is not safe for you never happens. There are some whose destinies have been designed to affect nations, but their present positioning will determine whether that ever comes to light or not. You will rather have that your child cry for one week than to allow him drive the car that you know he can't drive. Even if his mother joins him in begging you, would you agree? If all your neighbors come together and say, what is it? You must be a wicked man. Your boy has been weeping since yesterday saying, I will drive. What's in driving? Your reply will be, you don't know anything. Just go. I would rather have my son alive then have him go and kill himself because he's crying. In fact, you will tell the boy, cry the more, cry the louder and loudest you can. I won't give you the keys. 
I have told the Lord, wherever I will get to in life, that will cause me to miss my place with you. Never let me get there. You know that far be it that the Almighty will do wickedness. God does not do wickedly. So whatever can destroy your destiny, God won't let it reach your hand. That's why we have to pay attention to ourselves. We are the greatest enemies of our lives and destinies. The more we open up to God, the greater our destiny becomes. To have all our needs supernaturally met by God, we must make quality acquaintance and quality intimacy with him our gold we must make the fear of god the guiding principle of our lives it is spirituality that qualifies any christian or believer for supernatural prosperity job was a man that feared god and eschewed evil a perfect man and he grew to become the greatest of all men in the east no matter what happens to a man walking with god the end is always brighter than the beginning we have practiced the law with all commitment now let's practice the lifestyle a lifestyle that makes god our sole purpose for living let's practice a lifestyle that makes whatever pleases god God turn us on. Let pleasing God become our way of life. Let everything about God excite us, including all his plans and purposes. When we get to that point in our lives, things will begin to work for us. We have struggled enough. The moon never struggles. It just aligns itself at a particular angle to the sun and then reflects its glory. I want us to have an unusual desperation to know more of God as it is the actual basis for true spirituality. True spirituality is not a function of prayer and fasting but a function of more knowledge of God not the knowledge about God. Too many know about God but very few know God. The more of him you know the more spiritual you naturally become. You don't imbibe God's nature in prayer or through fasting. You imbibe God's nature from his word. Jesus said the words that I speak unto you they are spirit and they are life. John 6 verse 63. You eat the word to reflect God's nature. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 3 verse 18. As we all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed from glory to glory even as by the spirit of the Lord. So the more of him we discover, the more of his nature we reflect. Everyone that made it through was desperate for more of God. And true spirituality is desperation for more of God. The more of him you know, the more like him you become. In Romans 1 verse 28, the Bible says, As they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient from the above scripture we see that when we don't retain god in our knowledge we become carnal spirituality is the cure for carnality and the knowledge of god is the answer to true spirituality the more of him we know the more like him we become and the more like him we become the greater our access to all that he carries daniel shadrach meshach and abednego knew god and with that knowledge they became immovable you know how abraham passed that test in hebrews 11 verse 17 to 19 abraham said god is able he can raise up sons unto me from stones from the much of him i know there is nothing he tells me to do that is calculated against me god is not working against me god is working for me if he said bring isaac i won't discuss it with anybody i'm carrying isaac up there i pray that the 
knowledge of God will stabilize our walk with him. The truth is, God is not against us. God is for us. Let me end this chapter with the testimony of this sister that was correctly positioned for her lifting. I joined this commission in 1998. Some time ago, there was a serious shakeup in the customs service. I was not here at last year's Shiloh, the annual convocation of winners. I was at Oweri on an official assignment, but immediately I returned. I bought the Shiloh cassettes and listened to one of the very powerful teachings titled God is all you need several times. The message kept ringing in my ears. When the restructuring in my office was going on, all I was hearing was the bishop telling me that all I needed was God and I keyed into those words. Family members, associates and officers from all over the place were calling me to ask what I was doing. I told myself I was not going to lobby any human being, that God was all that I needed. I did not talk to anybody. I was just praying and believing God that nothing will harm me. At a point, there was the rumor that those of us who came in through transfer of service were all going to be retrenched. I said that was not going to be my portion. After all, my daddy in the Lord has told me that all I needed was God and I knew I have God. The list of those to be retrained came out and my name was conspicuously missing from the list. Then the 58 commands nationwide were reduced to 25. So the next anxiety was who were those to make up the list? Again, everybody was concerned. I still said, God is all that I need and my God who did it before will still do it. Finally, the 25 names came out. When there were 58 commands, 6 women were part of the 58 with only 25 commands now. To the glory of God, I am the only woman left. Chapter 3 Be in Love and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Romans 8 verse 28 When the love of God is in place in the life of a man, everything begins to work together for good for him. All things work together for good for them that love the Lord, not for them that serve him or are preaching for him. Winning God's heart is the number one task of every believer. The pursuit of the heart of God is God's secret card for having all our needs met. Paul tried to define what he meant by those who are called in verse 29 and 30. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified. And and whom he justified, them he also glorified. So the calling is not a calling into the ministry or a calling to discover your place in life. It's not a visionary calling, but a calling into redemption, a calling into salvation. We know that all things work together for good to them that love God, among them that are called. It's one thing to be called. It's another thing to fall into that group of them that love God. When we are in that class, we end up glorified in all areas of our lives. Loving God is a covenant secret card for having all our needs met. The love of God is our secret card for all round breakthroughs. No wonder Paul, knowing that the love of God is our secret card for having all our needs met, went further in that chapter to ask, 
who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? He concluded, Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Romans 8 verse 35 and 37. According to him, we are smarter than the devil. We would not sell off for any reason as long as we retain this mysterious virtue of loving god we have a guarantee of having all our needs met the bible also says in first corinthians 2 verse 9 but as it is written i hath not seen nor hear heard neither have entered into the heart of man the things which god has prepared for them that love him fall in love it is one thing to be called it is another thing to be in love it is one thing to be called saved and baptized in the holy ghost and another to be in love it is one thing to be in service and another thing to be in love when we fall in love with god things answer to us on their own accord this is because the love of god is the covenant platform upon which every scripture delivers it is the hub that makes every scripture get fulfilled in a man's life a lawyer asks jesus which is the greatest commandment in the law matthew 22 verse 36 to 40 he responded saying thou shalt love the lord thy god with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind this is the first and the greatest commandment and the second is like unto it thou shalt love thy thy neighbor as thyself on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets so all scriptures function on the platform of our love for god our love for god is the qualifier for the fulfillment of every promise of scripture in our lives when the love of god is out of place in our lives we become firefighters circumstances and situations of life can easily toss us around when the love of god is at work in our lives all things begin to answer to us on their own accord by his grace all things answer to me they keep coming from every side from the north south east and the west health strength joy and rest round about answer to me be jealous for god you may gather all the principles i teach from my books and tapes but you don't know my secret until you discover my heartbeat for god elijah was a man that loved the lord to the point of being jealous for him hear what he said i have been very jealous for the lord god of hosts because the children of israel have forsaken thy covenant throw down thine altars and slain thy prophets with the sword and i even i only am left and they seek my life to take it away first kings 19 verse 14 by jealousy for god i'm not talking about just being emotional i'm talking about a marital order of affection elijah was a man like us but are we standing where he stood we we can't carry Elijah's passion and not get the kind of results he got. Did you see David standing before Goliath? And David spoke to the men that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the man that killed this Philistine and taken away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defile the armies of the living God? Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come to thee 
in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. This day will the Lord deliver thee unto mine hand, and I will smite thee and take thine head from thee, and I will give the carcasses of the hosts of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air, and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. First Samuel 17 verse 26, 45 to 46. David said, Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defile the army of the Most High? Let him die. I can't stand this insult. I am jealous for the army of the Lord God of hosts. I can't stand this. They said, Don't go. But he said, I will go. If I die, I die. I can't stand this insult on the Lord God of Israel. I'm in pursuit of his heart. And he is touching my sensitive part. See how Goliath is messing up and defiling my God. Then he ran after him. The love of God brought the forces of heaven to back him up. And he brought Goliath down. Too many are in church. Very few are in love. Too many are in ministry. But very few are in love. Too many are elders and deacons in church. Yet only very few are truly in love. When you become truly in love with God, you become a living wonder on earth, having all your needs supernaturally met by him. The love of God sent Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego into the fairy furnace of fire. And that same love was what brought them out lifted. The love of God sent Daniel into the lion's den. And the love of God brought him out to reign as prime minister in the land. There is no substitute for the love of God in our quest to fulfill destiny. I would like you to pray this prayer now. Lord, set me on fire for you. Let the fire of your love by the ministry of the Holy Spirit begin to burn afresh in my soul, bringing me into the realm of covenant jealousy for you. Cause that everything that concerns you will naturally turn me on. God is all you need to have all your needs met. Benefits of loving God. Let's examine some of the things we benefit from loving and serving the Lord. All round rest. Now for a long season, Israel has been without the true God and without a teaching priest and without law. But when they in their trouble did turn unto the Lord God of Israel and sought him, he was found of them. And in those times, there was no peace to him that went out, nor to him that came in. But great vexations were upon all the inhabitants of the countries. A nation was destroyed of nation and city of city, for God did vex them with all adversity. And they entered into a covenant to seek the Lord God of their fathers with all their heart and with all their soul, that whosoever would not seek the Lord God of Israel should be put to death, whether small or great, whether man or woman. And they swore unto the Lord with a loud voice and with shouting and with trumpet and with cornet and all judah rejoiced at the oath for they had sworn with all their heart and sought him with their whole desire and he was found of them and the lord gave them rest round about second chronicles 15 verse 3 to 6 12 to 15 they entered into a covenant to seek the Lord God of their fathers with all their hearts, with all their soul, and with the whole of their desire. God became their central focus and desire. And they entered into a covenant to seek the Lord God of their fathers 
with all their hearts and with the whole of their desire that is affection he was found of them and the lord gave them rest round about all round rest they were no longer looking for bread and butter god became their satisfaction they were no longer consumed with what things were coming to them but with what things were affecting god and his kingdom it was only then that god gave them rest round about so every time we ignore god what we have is no peace going out no peace coming in but great vexation and nations destroying nations we have chosen trouble vexation lack of peace and devastation however when we return to the lord dignity will be restored and all our needs will be met we become his friend henceforth i call you not servants for the servant knoweth not what his lord doeth but i have called you friends for all things that i have heard of my father i have made known unto you john 15 verse 15 do you know what this means the bible says when we are in love we are no longer servants but friends and as a result all things that christ has received from his father he freely makes known unto us david was in love no wonder god was constantly confiding in him he never lost a battle his friendship with god was what made the bible describe him as a prophet he became a prophet by being a friend of god he became god's confidant he won the heart of god so he walked in liberty and dignity in 1996 israel celebrated the 3000th year that david named jerusalem the city of david can you imagine somebody's day being celebrated 3000 years after he has left love never dies paul said for me to live is christ and to die is gain as a result reference is still being made to him even till now all we hear is paul said this and paul said that paul didn't die because love never dies his love for god didn't allow him to die i see the birth of generational leaders people who will never know death like david and paul i see people that generations yet unborn will keep celebrating through this covenant mystery of love the love of god is the mystery that brings you to the realm of all things are yours so we can't lose color when we are in love we can't lose color walking in love with god we receive insights the secrets belong unto the lord our god but those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever that we may do all the words of his law deuteronomy 29 verse 29 it is not how hard we read that guarantees revelation but how much god shows us cramming scriptures is not what makes us people of knowledge but the revelation of the father god to us on the basis of our love relationship with him when we are in love we have access to hearing from god and when we hear from god faith comes alive in us faith draws on revelation for faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of god the voice of of god is mightier than the voice of many waters the voice of god silences all doubts without struggles and the bible says when we take the shield of faith we quench all the fiery darts of the devil ephesians 6 verse 16 insight begets faith and faith guarantees supernatural victory quenching all the fiery darts of the devil that are coming from every side the love of god is a covenant secret card for having all our needs met it's not shouting nor clapping it's being in pursuit of the heart of god as a way of life that's why the bible says faith 
which walketh by love. Galatians 5 verse 6. The degree of faith we operate in is equivalent to the level of our love for God. Faith works to the level of our love for God. Answered prayers. Talking about prayers. The Bible says in Matthew 6 verse 14 to 15 that when we do not forgive others, our heavenly father will also not forgive us and love forgives all things that means without love we have no guarantee of answers to our prayers but what do we have we find people celebrating how many hours they pray even when this vital key of love is missing there is a group of people that before the call god says he will answer and while they are yet speaking he will perform this is the group of those who love god having our prayers answered is a function of the quality of our love relationship with god if i regard iniquity in my heart the lord will not hear me psalm 66 verse 18 it means that when we are not in love we will retain offenses in our hearts which will block our prayer channel thus we will merely be praying empty prayers and generating empty sweat without results it guarantees prosperity and though i bestow all my goods to feed the poor and though i give my body to be burned and have not charity it profited me nothing first corinthians 13 verse 3 that means our giving equals zero when it's not given on the platform of love or with a heart for god we give to the poor because of the love of god moving us to we give for the promotion of the kingdom because of the love of god that is moving us love is the covenant key to spiritual understanding it is the covenant key to faith and it is the covenant key to answered prayer it is also the covenant key to our prosperity because without love our giving profits us nothing that means the love of god is what determines our true worth in the kingdom god is all we need to have all our needs met faith is all it takes to get through to god and an understanding of the word is all that faith requires love provides answer to all questions the love of god is what endears us to god we enjoy divine backing jesus said in john 14 verse 21 to 22 he that hath my commandments and keepeth them he it is that loveth me and he that loveth me shall be loved of my father and i will love him i will manifest myself to him if a man love me he will keep my words and my father will love him and we will come unto him and make a abode with him we can't secure divine backing without love and without divine backing we may die as backbenchers divine backing is what makes a frontliner remember you are a city set on a hill which cannot be hidden saints of god pray this prayer whatever it takes for me to fall in love with god i desire it now it is my choice to be in love because my being in love with god is the true answer to meeting all my needs get married to him this prophetic scripture in isaiah 54 will help us appreciate what becomes of us when we love god and our creator becomes our husband sing O barren thou that didst not bear break forth into singing and cry aloud thou that did not travel with child for more are the children of the desolate than the children of of the married wife say yet the lord and lack the place of thy tents and let them stretch forth the curtains of thine habitation spear not lengthen thy cords 
and strengthen thy sticks. For thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left, and thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles, and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. Fear not, for thou shalt not be ashamed, neither be thou confounded, for thou shalt not be put to shame, for thou shalt forget the shame of thy youth, and shalt not remember the reproach of thy widowhood any more. For thy maker is thine husband, the Lord of hosts is his name, and thy redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, the God of the whole earth, shall he be called. For the Lord hath called thee as a woman forsaken and grieved in spirit, and a wife of youth when thou wast refused, say yet thy God. For a small moment have I forsaken thee, but with great mercies will I gather thee. In a little rust I hid my face from thee for a moment, but with everlasting kindness will I have mercy on thee, say yet the Lord. Lord, thy Redeemer. Isaiah 54 verse 1 to 8. When our Creator becomes our husband, we become people to be wondered and marveled at. When our Creator becomes our husband, we are far from oppression. When our Creator becomes our husband, we break forth to the right and to the left. Everything begins to answer to us and walk in our favor. All our struggles in life will come to an end. The bridegroom is knocking on your heart right now asking, do you really love me? When you get into a love relationship with me, all your struggles will come to an end. I will rewrite your story. Everywhere you have suffered shame, I will give you double honor in its place. For this is as the water of Noah unto me. For as I have sworn that the waters of Noah should no more go over the earth, so have I sworn that I would not be wroth with thee nor rebuke thee. For the mountains shall depart and the hills be removed, but my kindness shall not depart from thee, neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed, saith the Lord that hath mercy on thee. O thou afflicted, tossed with tempest, and not comforted. Behold, I will lay thy stones with fair colors, and lay thy foundations with sapphire, and I will make thy windows of agate, and thy gates of carbuncles, and all thy borders of pleasant stones. Isaiah 54 verse 9 to 12. When we are in love with him, he gives color to our lives, and all thy children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be the peace of thy children. In righteousness shalt thou be established, thou shalt be far from oppression, for thou shalt not fear, and from terror, for it shall not come near thee. Behold, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. Whosoever shall gather together against thee shall fall for thy sake. Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire, and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work, and I have created the waster to destroy. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, say yet the Lord. Isaiah 54 verse 13 to 17 when we are truly in love, we step into the realms of unlimited breakthroughs. Our destinies become colorfully secure. That is why nothing should be allowed to contest the place of God in our lives. I came into the kingdom in 1969 by divine election and got into this holy world block with the Father on September 12, 1976. The Father became my sole desire, my living bridegroom. Everything that lost value to me then has never regained value till now. Oh, what a day when I entered into a covenant to make him my all in all. 
why don't you enter into a covenant of rest with him right now when your maker becomes your husband then you will begin to enjoy the benefits of marital security my wife has never begged me for anything as imperfect as i am therefore when you become his wife you won't need to cry to him for anything when jesus the bridegroom was here with the twelve who were his brides he asked them when i sent you without purse and scrip and shoes lacked ye anything they said nothing luke 22 verse 35 not one of them was reported sick he was the bridegroom in their midst he said so himself in matthew 9 verse 15 can the children of the bride chamber mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them when the bridegroom is in the room with us he answers before we call this is because god is not only loving his love can you imagine the benefits that will accrue to his wife when love now gets married god is love so when we get married to god who is love then our case is settled only what god cannot do will be deprived us but is there anything too hard for god that means the love of god is what opens us to a world of all things are yours when they were with him none of them had to go home to bury their wives or children because they were his brides he was the bridegroom in their midst everything that concerned them was covered because love covereth all things marriage is not a thing to assume it is consciously entered into he can't be a husband without a conscious contract without a covenant that binds the two of us together he became my all in all by a covenant act entered into on september 12 1976 he became my darling the one i think about day in and day out he's my reason for living i can say i'm madly in love with him so he lavishes all he can afford on me i have become a wonder to many because of the effect of his love at work in my life he gives me unusual strength and soundness he helps me to go beyond limits longing to please him paul the apostle a man of great insight said in second corinthians 11 verse 2 for i am jealous over you with godly jealousy for i have espoused you to one husband that i may present you as a chaste virgin to christ i have shown you that there is need to get into a marital our covenant with christ we are citizens of the kingdom according to isaiah 54 we are like the widow in the land and our bridegroom is knocking at the door saying my son give me your heart proverbs 23 verse 26 in romans 5 verse 5 the bible says the love of god is shed abroad in our hearts by the holy ghost which is given unto us the holy ghost fuses the love of god into the hearts of men he destroys the self inside man and enthrones god he destroys the selfishness the self-centeredness the loss of the eye the loss of the flesh and the pride of life so you can be espoused to one husband even christ you need to see me when he picked me up you need to see what i looked like when i got married to him then you will know that he knows how to deck his bride with glory and color when you are married to him the two of you become one flesh the dignity of christ then naturally reflects on you 
he that touches you touches the apple of his eyes he decks you with honor glory and beauty that is what you are entering into by being married to him the bible says eyes has not seen nor hear heard neither have entered into the heart of man the things which god has prepared for them that love him so what will begin to happen in our lives from now will be uncommon and unheard of when we become his wife he becomes the savior of our bodies so no more aches no more pains no more breakdowns and suffocation because the husband is the head of the wife even as christ is the head of the church and the savior of the body whatever cannot stand the bridegroom will not be able to molest his wife therefore no more molestation for us everyone is cautious with other people's wives because if you mess with her you will lose respect before her husband no matter how much respect he had for you before in the same vein when we become the wife of the bridegroom he cannot be molested by any devil his love secures his divine presence for us which makes us impossible targets for the enemy for every opposition trembles at his presence all our needs are supernaturally met and our battles are over as you enter into this marital covenant with the bridegroom today i decree that your story will be sweeter than mine whatever cannot tamper with god's bride will no longer succeed in tampering with your life welcome to your season of unlimited breakthroughs welcome to your era of kingdom dignity welcome to the dawning of a new day in jesus name i decree that as from today all things will begin to work together for your good i would like you to look for a space in your bible and write your covenant stand there just as i did 28 years ago i'm simply in love with him he's all i need he meets all my needs he's just too precious just too good too kind and too loving he's everything to me chapter four giving is living in the preceding chapters you received the baptism of the love of god i believe the fire of his love is now burning in your heart having been married to the bridegroom in every sound marriage your wife is not different from you your wife is you and you are your wife if a house is on fire and your wife is inside a battalion cannot hold you back from going inside to rescue her you will break through them to go inside the house as you can't just stand there watching the house being burnt likewise when we become the bride of this bridegroom our destinies are eternally secured as he will do everything to keep us safe and give us a good life jesus is that bridegroom prove your love now let us quickly qualify the love of god so we don't misunderstand what it actually represents or means in first john 3 verse 17 to 18 the bible says but who so has this world's good and seeth his brother have need and shut it off his bowels of compassion from him how dwelleth the love of god in him my little children let us not love in word neither in tongue but in deed and in truth also in james 2 verse 15 to 16 the bible shows us what love is not if a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food and one of you say unto them depart in peace be ye warmed and filled notwithstanding ye give them not those things which are needful to the body what does it profit the above scripture clearly defines the essence of love they reveal what the love of god entails the love of god is validated by giving 
given is the only biblical way of demonstrating the love of God. It is the only proof that we love God or our fellow men. The Bible admonishes us thus. Let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. 1 John 3 verse 18. What did the Bible say in John 3 16? God so loved the world that he spoke. God so loved the world that he taught. God so loved the world he danced. And God so loved the world he sang. No, the Bible says he gave his only begotten son to prove his love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. John 3 16. In 2 Corinthians 8 verse 8 Paul said, I speak not by commandment but by occasion of the forwardness of others and to prove the sincerity of your love. He was talking about giving. Giving is the only way of proving the sincerity of our love. We are not sincere in our claim to love God if we are not givers. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then said they among the heathen, The Lord hath done great things for them. The Lord hath done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Turn again our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Psalm 126 verse 1 to 6. Giving is also a covenant device through which captivities are turned, bringing us into our dreamland in God. Are we ready for a land of no struggles, no stress, no borrowing, no begging, no disease, and no sickness? Are we ready to enter our dreamland now? All things are ours. Now ye Philippians, know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but ye only. For even in Thessalonica ye sent once and again unto my necessity, not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. But I have all and abound, I am full, having received of Epaphroditus the things which were sent from you, an odor of a sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well pleasing to God. Philippians 4, verse 15 to 18. To prove the sincerity of their love for Paul, the Philippian church sent gifts to him once and again, not once and for all. According to Paul, they sent it not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. So what they were given was not only to support Paul, but to support themselves also. And by this sacrifice, that they sent once and again proving the sincerity of their love for God. Paul said in verse 19 but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Paul is speaking to people that are in the giving covenant here. People that are involved in communicating to others concerning giving and receiving. People who are addicted to a giving life. How many of their needs will God supply? All. The covenant of prosperity covers all areas of our needs. Because they proved the sincerity of their love for God by sending once and again to Paul, he prayed that God will supply all their needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Our needs are not only financial. The greatest need of some people today is health 
and we know it's a common saying that health is wealth. The need of some others is favor because they seem to carry a spell of misfortune about them. Nothing seems to work for them. Rather, everything works against them all the time. Health Benefits the Bible says in Exodus 23 verse 25 to 26, And ye shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread and thy water. And I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. There shall nothing cast their young, nor be barren in thy land. The number of thy days I will fulfill. When we begin to serve God with our substance, we are exempted from the affliction of sickness and diseases. Also in John 15 verse 2, the Bible says, Every branch in me that veareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that veareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. To purge means to keep fit to remove whatever constitutes a parasite. God then begins to take care of us personally so we can bear more fruits. What this means is that when we are committed to God in our financial stewardship, we become beneficiaries of his divine health policy. I have never been out of any meeting on health grounds in the past 23 years. Neither have I laid my back on any hospital bed. I have been bouncing about like a stone day in day out because I am in the giving covenant with God. That covenant forbids the affliction of sickness and disease. I told my associates recently that I had my program tied up till the year 2050. I have mapped out a schedule of what I will be doing at each phase till that year. Not only that, I have also vowed never to surrender to any doctor because I am in a covenant that forbids it. Monetary value cannot be placed on health. Only foolish people have no value for health as just one sickness can clear all life savings and family inheritance. People have told me what they pay for health and it's so scary. None of our covenant fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were plagued with any disease. Abraham was old and well stricken in age, and the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. Genesis 24 verse 1. The giving covenant brings us into an all-round blessing realm, not just monetary blessings. People who don't know God have a problem. God is not in need. His mission is to meet our needs. He already feels all in all. There is nowhere else for God to feel. The world belongs to him. God is not calling for supporters. God is looking for people he can help. Paul said, My God shall supply all your need. How by doing this one thing, be involved in the covenant of giving, and you will be entitled to the blessing of receiving all things that are needed in your life. Divine Defense we live in a wicked world. One of the greatest needs of humanity today is protection. The Bible says, Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he has but a short time. Revelation 12 verse 12. Satan is very angry because time is running out on him, so it's hitting at everybody he can see. However, the Bible says concerning those in the giving covenant, the Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob defend thee, send thee help from the sanctuary, and strengthen thee out of Zion. Remember all thy offerings, and accept thy burnt sacrifice. Psalm 20 verse 1 to 3. When God remembers our offerings, he rises to our defense. 
when in trouble, he stands to our defense when no one else is around. Also in Job 22 verse 21 to 25, the Bible says, Acquaint now thyself with him and be at peace, thereby good shall come unto thee. Receive, I pray thee, the law from his mouth, and lay up his words in thine heart. If thou return to the Almighty, thou shalt be built up, thou shalt put away iniquity far from thy tabernacles. Then shalt thou lay up gold as dust, and the gold of offer as the stones of the brook. Yeah, the Almighty shall be thy defense, and thou shalt have plenty of silver. So the giving covenant makes us enjoy the blessedness of divine defense also. We are divinely protected against satanic arrows. We are protected, shielded, and covered. Money can't buy defense, but the covenant makes it available. Remember Job? He was in the giving covenant, and one one day Satan said to God, Does Job fear God for not? Has not thou made an hedge about him, and about his house, and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. Job 1 verse 9 to 10. When we are in the covenant of prosperity through giving, God builds a hedge of fire around us, around our houses, and around all that we have. Before our church moved from Lagos to Cana land, three people gathered together against me. They said I was giving them a lot of trouble. One of them who had money and was very popular said he would finance whatever the arrangement to eliminate me would cost. While they were busy with their plans to eliminate me through whatever means, I wasn't aware I was just busy doing my job. Then God struck. The man who chaired the meeting lost his first son, 40 year old. He just fell and died. Meanwhile, I didn't know anything. The Bible says the law shall be thy defense and you shall have plenty of silver just go to sleep because he that keeps us neither sleeps nor slumber they buried two adults in that man's house in a short space of time in fact the chairman himself died also a vehicle hit him along the road i even gave them money for his treatment not knowing that they were planning my death as a result meetings scattered arrangement filled and everybody took cover but the son of god is still here today the man who was to sponsor my elimination spent five years in prison and lost everything he had in fact our church bought one of his houses when you are in the covenant you are under a covering that no witches wizard or bony cult or forces of hell can tamper with we live in a very wicked continent where mothers eat of their children and fathers use their children for money charms however for us to enjoy a covering that is solid and sure a covenant cover in christ is needed through the covenant of giving and receiving i do not mean give one naira get ten naira that's not what i'm talking about i'm talking about establishing a covenant connection with the father we guarantees us the opportunity of enjoying his total health and protection policy as you enter into this giving covenant today wherever they rise up against you judgment will answer in the camp of your enemies in jesus name supernatural insight another blessing we enjoy by being in the giving covenant is supernatural insight we walk in the realm of wisdom that amazes our peers how talking to the israelites in malachi 3 verse 10 god said bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in mine house and prove me now 
here with say at the lord of hosts if i will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it when we give the lord opens the windows of heaven and pours out a blessing upon us but have you ever seen cars boxes of clothes and shoes dropping from the sky no it doesn't happen so what does god mean by opening the windows of heaven in genesis 7 verse 11 to 12 where the bible first records the windows of heaven being opened what came out rain in the 600th year of noah's life in the second month the 17th day of the month the same day where all the fountains of the great deep broken up and the windows of heaven were opened and the rain was upon the earth 40 days and 40 nights genesis 7 verse 11 to 12 what does that mean in zechariah 10 verse 1 the bible says ask ye of the lord rain in the time of the latter rain so the lord shall make bright clouds and give them showers of rain to everyone grass in the field also in joel 2 verse 23 the bible says be glad then ye children of zion and rejoice in the lord your god for he has given you the former rain moderately and he will cause to come down for you the rain the former rain and the latter rain in the first month it then means that when the windows of heaven opens the rain of god is poured out which represents the holy spirit thus are given provokes an outpouring of the spirit which quickens our understanding for the spirit of the lord shall rest upon him and shall make him of quick understanding isaiah 11 verse 2 to 3 by that understanding we begin to command amazing blessings our giving opens our heaven so that the spirit of god is poured out upon us opening up our understanding as a result we then begin to command supernatural wealth by divine wisdom wisdom begets wealth and our giving is what provokes wisdom the holy spirit opens us up to things that money cannot buy it he causes great things to begin to happen for us it is our turn for a turnaround the covenant of giving is not a device to support a church or promote the work of the ministry it is essentially the design of the father to promote and secure our destinies bringing us to a place that can be called our dreamland where he turns our captivity as they that dream swan blessings love is fake except it is expressed in giving the quality of our sacrifice is what defines the quality of our love for god abraham took a sacrifice to the lord one day and god was teared up in heaven and he swore a blessing upon abraham and said by myself have i sworn say yet the lord for because thou hast done this thing and hast not withheld thy son thine only son that in blessing i will bless thee and in multiplying i will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is upon the seashore and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because thou hast obeyed my voice genesis 22 verse 16 to 18 abraham's sacrifice was what provoked god 
to swear a blessing upon him. That means the giving covenant qualifies us for a sworn blessing. When God swears his blessings upon our lives, we can no longer remain strugglers and wanderers on earth. May we locate and give God a sacrifice that will qualify us for a sworn blessing in Jesus' name. Many years ago, I was in my office thinking and talking to God. I said, Lord, you sent us to go on this mission, but why are people not giving? And as I was worshipping him, the Lord, pointing to my car, said, give me that car. I said, praise the Lord. I told my wife, what the Lord had said, and off the car went. It was parked and given to him with all delight. Then on my way from work, the Lord said to me, My son David, even if you don't want to be rich, it is too late. God, as it were, was swearing a blessing upon me. He was saying, I am committed to your enrichment, and I will clear off any devil that comes your way i am committed let's prove the sincerity of our love by giving until we give our love is fake they that sow in tears shall reap in joy he that goeth forth and weepeth bearing precious seed shall doubtless come again with rejoicing bringing his sheaves with him psalm 126 verse 5 to 6 every sacrifice that is laid on the altar in love entitles us to the turning of our captivity therefore i welcome you to your dreamland welcome to your struggle free land and welcome to your land of divine protection welcome to your land of divine health welcome to your land of divine favor curses are broken noah reared an altar unto the lord after the flood and god averted the curse that he placed on the earth and noah builded an altar unto the Lord, and took of every clean beast, and of every clean fowl, and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And the Lord smelled a sweet savour, and the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground any more for man's sake, for the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite any more everything living as I have done. While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, and cold and heat, and summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. Genesis 8 verse 20 to 22. Many are living under generational curses. We can break them through this covenant of giving. Our tithes, offerings, sacrifices, and kingdom investments are factors that ratify our place in the covenant of abundance. So don't play with them. I have been in it for years and have seen great things happening for me from glory to glory. It's my prayer that you will not sell your birthright for a morsel of meat. Receiving the giving grace. Jesus is a perfect example of the giving covenant. He was always on the giving line. Even when he was to be betrayed, he told Judas, that thou doest, do quickly. And his disciples reasoned that it could mean only two things. Either that he should go and buy what was needed for the feast, or he should go and give something to the poor. Jesus was an addicted giver. He gave and gave until he gave his life. He bore the stripes on his body for our health. He also gave himself, so we will no more be poor. For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich. Second Corinthians 8 verse 9 Jesus came to enrich us, not to make us poor, 
for do we want an open heaven do we want to live in the realm where all our needs are supernaturally met then we need the power to give so that our heavens can remain open jesus said in john 10 verse 17 to 18 therefore does my father love me because i lay down my life that i might take it again no man taketh it from me but i lay it down of myself i have power to lay it down and i have power to take it again this commandment have i received of my father do you want to receive that power to lay down so he can lift you up then say to the lord right now lord i receive the power to lay down whatever is required of me so i can get my life out of the grave of affliction the grave of opposition and the grave of lack and the want i receive that power now in jesus precious name no one can survive the curse of god when we are not in the giving covenant we are not left as we are we are either under the blessings of the covenant or we are under its curses there is no middle ground in this covenant we are either under its blessings or we are victims of its curses we cannot be neutral i'm talking about supernatural prosperity when a man comes under the heavy blessings of the almighty when god blesses he removes every sorrow from it the blessing of the lord it maketh rich and he added no sorrow with it proverbs 10 verse 22 are you ready for god's sorrow free blessings when he blesses he creates an environment around us that makes us enjoy the blessings we can no more be found on an hospital bed nor will we be found struggling with the witch and wizards in the night he protects us he becomes our defense as he multiplies us he also multiplies his protection over our lives god is all you need to have all your needs met i lost my consciousness of lack when i discovered the validity of this covenant we have not triumphed by tricks but by operating in the truth you don't have to die in your ignorance you are either under the blessings of the covenant or you keep suffering under its curse will you enter into the giving covenant now then pray this prayer oh lord god i know there is no midway in this matter i'm either under the blessing of the covenant or i suffer under its curses i choose to live under its blessings holy spirit help me to live true to the demands of the covenant in jesus mighty name chapter 5 faith is all it takes and blessed is she that believed for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the lord luke 1 verse 45 every promise in the bible works by faith that is the blessings in the bible can only be enjoyed if we believe them faith does not just believe that god is almighty and that god has everything faith is obeying god proving that we believe him so we can commit him to confirm his word in our lives obedience is what gives credibility to faith faith is fake if it is void of obedience show me what your faith has produced without your acting on what god says and i will show you what my faith has produced by my acting on what god says faith has no evidence when it is void of obedience it is our obedience that gives life to faith our obedience is what makes faith produce evidence abraham was blessed by faith 
and was established with work. God said to him, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him therefore a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. And he went, laid Isaac upon the altar of sacrifice, and would have sacrificed him if he hadn't been stopped. Genesis 22 verse 1 to 12. Hence James 2 verse 21 says, was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? He heard God's word and acted on it. So faith without works is dead faith and dead faith cannot produce living results. The best way out. There are more than enough blessings for all, but unfortunately not many people know the way to them. There are two ways, his ways and our ways. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, say yet the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Isaiah 55 verse 8 to 9 some individuals including believers have engaged natural and intellectual ways in trying to get all their needs met but god is saying that no matter what they are able to touch it can't be compared with what he makes available to us when we walk in his way his ways to getting him to meet all our needs is what i have shown in this book our obedience in doing them is what guarantees his meeting all our needs he said in his word the young lions do lack and suffer hunger but they that seek the lord shall not want any good thing psalm 34 verse 10 he said they that seek the lord shall not want any good thing that means if we seek his ways which is the higher and better way, then we won't lack any good thing, including financial prosperity, sound health, wisdom, protection, and favor. All those things which the Gentiles are seeking after and even killing themselves for will be cheaply added unto us. Job chose God's way and he became the greatest man in the entire East. Job's testimony stated that he had access to the secrets of God. As I was in the days of my youth, when the secret of God was upon my tabernacle. Job 29 verse 4. God's secret was what made Job. He prospered financially, enjoyed divine health and protection, etc. He chose God and his ways, and he didn't know lack all his days on earth. Even the devil could testify to this. Job 1 verse 9 to 10. God's secret is also what I have revealed to us in this book. Obedience to them is the proof that we believe them. It is one thing to hear and another thing to discover. What we hear is not what makes us. What we discover is what makes us destiny anchors on discovery. Knowing the way to where we are going is what makes a star in any field of pursuit. That is why the need for understanding was emphasized in chapter 1. Job had access to secrets his contemporaries and business colleagues didn't have access to. For instance, while others were committed to every kind of effort to go up, Job was committed to helping people with the blessings God had blessed him with. Even after the devil attacked him, he still emerged having things seven times more than before. God's secret is what makes stars in the kingdom because his ways are higher than our ways and his thoughts than our thoughts. When we line up our actions and thoughts with his ways and thoughts, 
we just become amazements to our world. All our needs are automatically met by heaven. Sweat will never be equal to surplus. It is our obedience that guarantees abundance. It is one thing to be in church and another to walk in obedience. It is one thing to know the truth. It is another to put the truth to work. The knowledge of scriptures does not guarantee a future. It is the practice of the scripture that guarantees a future. Every testimony of abundance in scriptures is traceable to the practice of this law. Abraham took one son to the altar and we are all covenant sons and daughters of Abraham today. In fact, Jesus Christ died to connect us to the blessings of Abraham. Solomon offered a thousand burnt sacrifices to God and divine wealth and wisdom exploded in his life. Job became the wealthiest man in the entire East because he was committed through his substance to helping the needy have their needs met. There is no testimony of supernatural abundance in scriptures that is not rooted in the compliance with the terms of the covenant. Don't be captured by circumstances. Subdue them with obedience. Our access to having all our needs met met is in following his ways and by doing it the way he says it should be done. Our ways can't amount to much. Only his ways can. Our obedience of faith is what guarantees our destiny in the kingdom. Trying to access God's treasures through prayer and fasting is only a waste of energy. Read this brother's testimony and see how he engaged God's way in having his needs met. I am a professional footballer. I joined this commission in 2003 while experiencing frustration in my career. But I thank God for for making me part of the winning winners. After I joined this commission, the door of my career flung open and I had about four offers to travel abroad. In all, I prayed that the best should spring forth. Before I knew what was happening, my manager that was abroad came back and sent for me. After our discussion, he said we would be traveling out of the country for a program. When it was time to select players I was selected but in the list drawn off my name was not there however as I was going to my hotel room I was joyful some of the players were amazed saying see Smith is not mentioned and yet he's joyful what kind of human being is he I wanted to pray when I got to my hotel room but the spirit of God told me this is the time to act on what the bishop has been been telling you so I started praising God. I later opened the book of 2 Chronicles 20 verse 20 which says, Believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. Believe his prophet, so shall ye prosper. I started praising God again and the Spirit of God instructed me to slot in one of the bishop's tapes titled Engaging the Violence of Faith and I did. In that tape the bishop said destiny without faith is doomed i said it is not for me i remained joyful and kept praising god in the evening another list came out and my name was number one on it among all the players that were on that trip i was the only one that didn't pay a dime to have my name on the list god wants to restore financial dignity to the body of christ he wants to meet all our needs but it can only be on his terms which have been revealed to you in this book god is not in need he is only committed to meeting our needs your compliance with the terms of the covenant is god's secret card for meeting all your needs he cannot meet our needs if we don't comply with the terms of the covenant receive grace to comply in jesus name